Hi, this is Selena Ashton with the University of Arizona School of Information, and welcome to our iSchool Colloquium talks. Today we are going to hear from one of our PhD students, Lauren M. Tamplin. He's going to be talking to us about cooperative multi-agent plan recognition and giving us a review of current literature. <clears throat> He's minoring in cognitive science and has a bachelor's degree of science in applied mathematics, a master's of education in teaching and teacher education, and a master's of science in statistics. Lauren's main research focus is symbolic artificial intelligence, specifically automated planning, plan recognition, knowledge engineering, and how these areas relate to cognitive science and theory of mind. He is a graduate research associate with the theory of mind-based cognitive architecture for teams project here at the University of Arizona and known also as Tomcat. Today, he will present a review of AI systems that can understand and assist teams of humans to cooperate on a specific goal or task. He will specifically talk to us about plan recognition and cooperation in AI multi-agent systems. And so feel free to interrupt if you have any quick clarification questions, um, perhaps about a definition or something very quickly that can be answered tough questions or theoretical questions, uh, please do not tap the, type them into the chat, but wait for the end, and then we'll go from there. Thank you. Um, so yeah, just like Selena said, I'm gonna talk about uh, uh, what I call cooperative multi-agent plan recognition. Um, this presentation is based off a literature review that I wrote for uh, my comprehensive exam. Um, I did change the presentation quite a bit to be more intro level, because uh, I imagine there's people in here who have no idea what plan recognition is, or you know, or especially cooperative multi-agent plan recognition. Um, uh, so a little bit of an overview of my presentation. Um, so first of all, I'm going to talk about uh, what is plan recognition and why is it useful for an AI agent. Um, how uh, plan recognition connects to uh, automated planning and then some common terminology used in plan recognition and cooperative multi-agent plan recognition. Um, and then I'm gonna talk about the taxon uh, taxonomy of approaches for doing cooperative multi-agent plan recognition. Uh, so this includes certain types of approaches that I've uh, discovered in my literature view. Um, and then I'm gonna give a quick description of the logic-based approaches, which are uh, probably more popular approaches um, and uh, probably most likely the, the types that people would not uh, have not yet heard about. Um, <clears throat> uh, other classifications used for plan recognition systems. And then uh, a little bit about the distribution of approaches that I found uh, while doing my literature review. Um, and then I'm gonna give some findings and conclusions uh, that I've found. Uh, so this includes uh, what I call the cost expressivity trade-off. Um, and then uh, uh, one of the findings was, I found that there was a lack of benchmarking and consistency and evaluation methods, and then some reproducibility issues. Uh, and then finally, I'm gonna talk about uh, how this literature, uh, what, what personal impact uh, this literature review had on me and what are some of my next steps in my research. Uh, so uh, first of all, what is plan recognition? Um, so to put it shortly, it is the ability to recognize structure and patterns uh, within a sequence of observed behaviors, or in other words, what we call a plan. Um, we use it to understand the behaviors of others and to potentially predict what they might do next. Um, it is a, uh, it, it's proven to be a, a very useful uh, area of research for AI uh, technology. Uh, so, you know, this is a capability that us humans have, but we're finding more and more that it's something useful for an AI agent uh, to also have. Um, so uh, plan recognition as a capability for an AI agent um, and enables them to understand the structure and race, uh, relationship between observed actions and goals. Um, if a AI agent uh, can implement plan recognition, then it might be able to predict someone's next actions. Um, something that's kind of part of our current uh, research project is uh, we want our agent to be able to suggest new actions uh, to people doing tasks, uh, specifically new actions that are in line with a person's belief or team strategy. Um, 
So as part of our research, we don't want to just develop an agent that optimizes uh, someone's task for them. Uh, we want it to be able to understand what someone's doing and then say, hey, you might want to try doing this or you might want to try this strategy. Um, and and uh, a, a suggestion or intervention that's agreeable to that person's beliefs. Um, so it's a little bit about uh, what we're trying to accomplish with our research. Um, so as I said before, uh, plan recognition and automated planning are deeply connected. Um, so they share a lot of like concepts and terminology. So a lot of the terminology I'll be using in this presentation are from the field of automated planning. Um, and plan recognition problems, as we call them, are often formulated as inverse planning problems. Um, and some of you might not know what a planning problem is, so I'll go ahead and review that real quick. Um, so planning problems are defined as either a set of goal states or a set of tasks, depending on what your planning paradigm is. And uh, these are to be completed given some initial state and in a set of possible actions. So basically we have some initial state uh, for some problem scenario. Uh, for example, uh, trying to bake and decorate a cake. And we say, okay, so we have this initial state and uh, containing this initial state could be like what ingredients we have, what the state of the kitchen is. Um, and then we have a set of possible actions that we can execute. And then we have some kind of goal state or states that we're trying to reach. So for example, I can say, okay, you know, my initial state is all these ingredients and the state of the kitchen and all the tools I have. And I'm trying to bake a uh, German chocolate cake with uh, chocolate frosting. Um, so uh, in the field of automated planning, uh, the goal is to develop a automated planner which attempts to organize the possible actions into a sequence that, uh, that transitions the initial state to the goal state. So basically like what actions can I do to get from uh, you know, ingredients to a German chocolate cake? Um, and as the, the caption for the example says, actions may be interleaved or concurrent. So I can do, I may be doing two actions at once. Um, or you know, maybe I do some actions that help me bake the cake, and those are interleaved with actions that help me make the frosting for the cake. Um, now, as I said, uh, plan recognition problems are often formulated as inverses to planning problems. Uh, so a plan recognition problem uh, is, is an inference task. Uh, so basically, the objective is to infer the lane relations among actions, agents, groups, resources, and world states from an observed plan. Uh, so whereas in a planning problem, my goal is to create a plan, a sequence of actions. Um, in a plan recognition problem, I'm given a plan, a sequence of actions, and I'm trying to infer knowledge about the planning process from the observed plan. Um, and as I, uh, for each formulated plan recognition problems, we can have different pieces of information. Um, you know, some planning information could be partially or completely missing. Uh, so for example, uh, if it's to recognize uh, what type of cake someone is making and what type of frosting they're making, um, maybe I know their goal is to make a German chocolate cake with chocolate frosting. I just don't know how the actions relate each, to each other to make the cake. And so I'm more interested in, in these relationships between actions, groups, goals, than what the actual end goal is. Um, and so, so as the caption says, you know, uh, oh, I said German chocolate cake, but it's, uh, I guess my example is actually a vanilla cake with chocolate frosting. Um, so maybe I don't care that the person's making a vanilla cake with chocolate frosting. I'm more caring about, hey, which actions uh, relate to baking the actual cake and which actions relate to uh, making the actual frosting. Um, and, you know, because as someone's actually doing this process, they could be, you know, cracking eggs into this bowl 
while also whipping the butter for the frosting. So inter interleaving. Um, anyways, so that's what a plan recognition problem. It's an inference task. I'm trying to infer, um, you know, uh, from, from an observed plan, what the planning process is. Um, and I know it sounds pretty vague. Um, so, uh, and, and that's because, you know, there could be all kinds of different plan recognition problems, um, which I'll talk about, uh, uh, you know, how, how, how that kind of causes issue for, for uh, method evalu uh, evaluating um, different approaches. Um, anyways, so, so far what I've been talking about is plan recognition in general. So for my literature review, I was specifically concerned about cooperative multi-agent plan recognition. Uh, so many proposed plan recognition systems only focus on recognizing the plans of a single agent but we're finding that it's becoming more valuable for an AI agent to be able to recognize the plans of a group of cooperating agents. Um, so for example, in the picture, we have a bunch of uh, firefighters. So I don't wanna just recognize the plans of a single firefighter. Maybe I have a group of firefighters working towards some task um, and I want to recognize and infer information about their planning process as a group. Um, the ability to recognize the plans of multiple, multiple cooperating agents. Um, I have uh, dubbed cooperative multi-agent plan recognition. Um, and what I mean by dubbed, uh, you know, if you actually Google cooperative multi-agent plan recognition, you're not gonna find an actual paper that defines it as cooperative multi-agent plan recognition. Um, but uh, basically what I mean by this title is, you know, it's a plan recognition they're plan recognition problems that concern multiple agents, and these multiple agents are working together. Um, so uh, now I'm gonna go over some of the terminology that is used in cooperative multi-agent plan recognition. Uh, most of this terminology is just used in plan recognition in general. And as I said before, a lot of the terminology comes from automated planning um, uh, research. So, uh, first of all, we have agents. So the agents are just uh, uh, autonomous entities. So all that means is each person here in this picture uh, is self-governed. They can do their own individual actions and they can work individually from the other people. Um, and that doesn't preclude them like doing group tasks. It's just that like each person could decide whether or not they want to participate in a group or joint task. Um, and then we have state. Uh, so states are sets of facts in the context of a given problem scenario. So if our problem scenario is like a search and rescue and we have these firefighters, um, so it, it's basically all the facts that are within this specific scenario. So for example, uh, one of the facts is agent A is holding the hose, agent B is propping up the ladder, agent C is on the ladder, um, so those are all things that are true, uh, as you see in this picture. So they, they are all part of the state. Um, and there are probably things outside of this picture that are also true. Um, and depending on how deeply defined or detailed we want to simulate the problem scenario, that's how complex the state is. Um, and I'll talk about that in a bit, but you know, uh, when, when I talk about cost versus expressivity. Um, so we have actions. So actions uh, delete or add elements to a state causing a transition to a new state. Um, so basically we can, we can have an action where agent C climbs the ladder. So uh, the previous state could have that the, the, could have agent C at the bottom of the ladder and then they perform the action climb ladder. And now in this new state, they're now at the window. So it has trans this action has transitioned the state to a new state. Um, actions typically have preconditions. So these are things that have to be true in the state for the action to be executed. Uh, so for example, you know, for agency to climb this ladder, the ladder has to be set in place. Um, so those are actions. Um, 
uh, I've, used the, I've used this word a lot, plan. Um, a plan is just simply a sequence of actions. So for example, agent A will roll out the hose, uh, agent B will prop up the ladder, agent C will climb the ladder. Um, that may not be the whole plan. I just wanted to give an example, but you know, it's just a sequence of actions that are happening. Um, and we can also talk about valid and invalid plans. Um, and, and, and simply put, a, a valid plan is just a plan that achieves some uh, wanted goal state and an invalid plan is a sequence of actions that doesn't. Um, so we also have planning domains. Uh, so a planning domain is a data structure containing common knowledge shared between many planning problems. So we could have a bunch of planning problems all concerned with these firefighters or search and rescue workers and maybe the rules and actions and agents and objects possible in these planning problems are all the same. Uh, so for convenience, we create this data structure which contains all this common uh, information and rules. And that's what's known as a planning domain. Um, so like when I'm developing like an automated planner for a specific planning problem or a group of planning problems or, or or a plan recognition algorithm for a, a set of planning problems, um, it's, it's really convenient to create a planning domain which encapsulates all this shared knowledge. Um, so uh, this is specific to plan recognition. So a lot of those other terms um, you'll hear in automated planning and plan recognition literature. Um, so we have what's called a plan explanation. And in some literature, uh, it will also be called a plan hypothesis. So um, plan explanations are solutions to a plan recognition problem. And again, that's really vague. And that's because the actual inference task for the plan recognition problem could be many different things. So a plan explanation is just a solution you know, to, to uh, whatever plan recognition problem we're trying to solve. Um, and so, for example, you know, this little, the little uh, butter robot from Rick and Morty is saying, you know, he's, he's looking at these people working. He's like, okay, I think they're trying to locate and rescue occupants before spraying water inside. So he's trying to give his best explanation for the plan that he's currently observing. Um, so that's plan explanations. That's basically all the like uh, terminology you would need to use to describe plan recognition and plan recognition problems. Um, so I do wanna move on to uh, the different types of approaches for cooperative multi-agent plan recognition. Um, and plan recognition in general shares these same uh, approach types. Um, but of course my literature review, again, was specifically on cooperative multi-agent plan recognition. So I framed any everything towards uh, that specific subfield. Um, so as you can see, uh, there's four main types. Uh, so there's the logic or what we call logic probabilistic hybrid approaches. Um, we have classical machine learning approaches, uh, which uh, any of you experienced in, in machine learning um, would, would pro would, are probably familiar with what, uh, what some machine learning models are. Uh, there are deep learning approaches, um, and then there are also brain theory approaches. Um, and brain theory approaches are like are approaches to doing plan recognition that are like inspired by uh, by neuroscience and and biology. Um, as you can see, the logic or logic probabilistic hybrid approaches can be split into two further subtypes. Uh, what we call plan library based approaches and what we call domain theory based approaches. Um, and as I said uh, in my overview, most people who have studied machine learning or deep learning will know what classical machine learning and deep learning entail. Um, but I doubt, uh, you know, people who are not familiar with like symbolic AI or plan recognition uh, probably don't understand what plan library and domain theory approaches are. Um, so those I will explain in further detail. One last thing before I move on from the slide. Um, 
one of the main difference between the logic based approaches and these and like the classical machine learning and deep learning approaches is that uh, the plan library based approach and domain theory based approach utilize what we call knowledge engineering. Uh, so uh, again, it is an inference task, but it's not a data driven inference task. Uh, basically, we're us as the humans are engineering what knowledge the uh, machine should know, what knowledge the agent should know and look for. So, uh, you know, basically the, the agent observes some plan and then it, it tries to match that plan to engineered knowledge, things that we told it. We say, hey, you know, there are two strategies for playing this game, okay? Try to match what you're seeing to one of these strategies. And us ourselves have, no, have engineered that those the knowledge of those strategies into the machine. Uh, whereas data driven, um, for, you know, for some people who are familiar with that, uh, basically, you know, you're looking at a, a bunch of data and you develop an algorithm which learns parameters and models from the the data. Um, so, so basically, in classical machine learning, deep learning, you know, the 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 approach is is having is some algorithm that's trying to learn the knowledge for itself. Whereas for logic base, we are the ones engineering the knowledge into the machine. Um, so as I said, uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, the two main uh, logic-based approaches. So first of all, uh, we have what's called the plan library-based uh, uh, approach. Um, in the literature, it's also called plan recognition as parsing. Um, and usually, uh, you know, plan library based approaches, they involve matching plans to simple grammar like structures. Uh, so uh, those of you who are familiar with like natural language processing and linguistics, um, you'll know that this is, uh, you know, like a, a, a parse tree or, um, you know, and it can, it can represent uh, some kind of grammar. So like a, a context free grammar, or um, maybe this is the grammar itself. This is a tree grammar. Um, and so we have a library of these parses. And all we're trying to do is match the observed plan to one of the plan parses in our library. And, and again, for those of you familiar who are familiar with linguistics and natural language processing, it's similar to parsing sentences using a grammar. Um, and really what these parses are telling us is the like relationship between actions um, as they relate to goals or higher level tasks, um, depending on the planning paradigm that um, we wanna use. Uh, so for example, like these capital letters could represent sub goals where this top uh, A, B, C, D, E, F is like the end goal. Or uh, if we're talking about uh, what we call hierarchical task networks, these could be higher level tasks. And we're basically just trying to match this plan to a parse. And then by matching it, it gives us possible information that says, okay, these two actions relate to this goal, this action relates to this goal, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and as you can see, it's possible that we can have more than one parse for a plan. Um, so as part of the, uh, you know, if we, if we do a plan recognition as parsing approach, as part of that, we have to decide on what the most likely or the best parse is. Um, and so, so a lot of the approaches detail, you know, how, how do I, it's not just about finding parses, but what's the best parse? What's the most likely parse that explains what's happening? Um, so there are also domain theory based uh, approaches. Uh, so this is also known as plan recognition as planning. Um, so in plan recognition as, a plan, as planning, uh, basically what we do is we use an automated planner to generate matching plans. So we observe some plan A, B, C, D, E, F, and we try to use automated planner to generate a plan that matches that. And so for these types of approaches, the planning domain and planners form this kind of generative model of the planning process. Um, and so what a plan explanation is in this context is it's usually the set of plan structures and parameters that can be used to generate the matching plan. 
So uh, basically, you know, we have some initial state and maybe there's some parameters in that initial state that are unknown to us, or maybe there's some planning structures within, you know, the uh, created within the domain and planner that are kind of unknown to us. So then we try to generate a bunch of plans that match the observed plans and say, okay, you know, uh, what's most likely? Is it this plan structures and parameters, or is it this plan structure and parameters, um, et cetera? So just like the plan library based approaches, we could have many solutions, many plan explanations. And uh, you know, a, a lot of the literature is on how do we dis, uh, decide which plan explanation is the best or most likely. So there are some other uh, designations and classifications we can make when doing uh, cooperative multi-agent plan recognition um, and plan recognition in general. So we have offline approaches versus online approaches. So an offline approach is basically we wait for the agent or agents to fully execute their plan. And then we try to do plan recognition. So we have like, we have this full plan of what they did for a, uh, specific task or goal. And then we say, okay, now from this full plan, can we infer information from it? Um, a slightly harder problem is online plan recognition. And this is trying to do plan recognition while the agents are executing the plan. So oftentimes in this, we have a partial plan up to some certain time step. And we wanna say, okay, based off what they've done so far, what do we think their planning process is or what their sub goals are or higher level tasks or strategies. Um, so that's the difference is, you know, one is we have the full plan and one we have a partial plan. Um, and they're, they're used for different applications. So, you know, for example, online plan recognition, um, a lot of times that's used for, uh, for plan prediction. So basically we do plan recognition up to a certain point we say, okay, they've done these three actions. Now, based off what we've seen, what might be their next five actions or 10 actions? So that's offline versus online. Um, so one uh, kind of system you might encounter that's specific to cooperative multi-agent plan recognition is systems that handle agent communication. Um, and this doesn't always mean natural language processing. Um, there are papers where like uh, they, they have some other system that's handled all the NLP work and they're merely just getting coded messages uh, that represent agent communication. Um, but in general, this is something that you see that you don't typically see a lot uh, in uh, single agent plan recognition, um, mostly because you don't have multiple agents talking to each other. Um, and I did make one like surprising, uh, when I talk about the distribution approaches, there is something I found that's pretty surprising. Um, so if you notice in the, the quote, it says, with group work, theories must additionally encompass the conversations among the participants, the roles they adopt in the or organizational setting. Um, and this is uh, from a, a paper, um, published in 1996, Falcone and, and Caso Franchi. Uh, basically the paper is called Plan Recognition from Single Agent to Multi-Agent. So they literally wrote a paper on how do we transition from doing single agent plan recognition to multi-agent plan recognition. In their paper, you know, they noted that, hey, agents are gonna talk to each other, people talk to each other. So conversations and, and communication between agents should be a huge thing in cooperative multi-agent plan recognition. And again, despite this quote, and despite a lot of the literature I've seen quoting uh, uh, or referencing Falcone and Castrofranchi, um, I'm kind of finding a little bit opposite of uh, what this quote is saying. Um, and, and I'll discuss that when I talk about the distribution of approaches. Um, but before that, I do want to talk about what are, what are other common classifications used for plan recognition systems. Um, so for example, uh, or not for example, um, so we have intended systems. Uh, and what an intended system is, is that's when the observed agents actively cater their behavior towards making plan recognition easier. So the agents themselves are being watched 
know that there's a plan recognition system and they're behaving to make it easier for the plan recognition system. Um, the opposite of that is adversarial systems. So again, the agents know they're being observed and they're actively trying to fool the plan recognition system. Um, and so there's actually a piece of literature I read where it's, a, it's, a, it's two opposing football teams. And so the, the plan recognizer is one of the football players and he's trying to recognize the, the plans of the opposing team. And so that's an adversarial system because that opposing team is actively trying to fool the opposing football player. Um, we also have what's called intervention systems. Uh, so an intervention system is when the plan recognition system actively interacts with the environment or agents to make plan recognition easier. So in intended and adversarial is the agents themselves that are behaving differently. In the intervention system, it's the plan recognizer or plan recognition system itself which tries to intervene on the environment or agents to make plan recognition easier. Um, now, with all that said, uh, we have what's called keyhole systems, and these are actually the most common plan recognition systems. Uh, a keyhole system actively avoids any interaction between the system and agents. So in most keyhole systems, the agents don't even know that they're being observed. Uh, so, and, and the system itself does nothing to try to interact with the agents other than just observe them and do plan recognition. And again, this is the most common. Um, so uh, another classification, um, well, well, it's really a feature that some plan recognition systems can have is subgroup detection. And it is specific to cooperative multi-agent plan recognition. Um, so basically among uh, uh, researchers of cooperative multi-agent plan recognition, um, there's this theory that when a group of people do a task or work towards a goal, they form subgroups. Basically, they split themselves into smaller, little, uh, smaller groups or teams to accomplish certain uh, goals or tasks. And so uh, some cooperative multi-agent plan recognition approaches uh, attempt to do subgroup detection. They, they want to detect when agents split into smaller subgroups. Um, so anyways, this is other you know, terminology or, or classifications that you'll encounter in the plan recognition uh, literature. Um, so now I want to talk about uh, the distribution of uh, cooperative multi-agent plan recognition approaches that I found during my literature review. So I split them between offline and online. And then you'll notice, you know, uh, I listed them under pl either plan library, domain theory, or classical machine learning. Uh, you'll notice that there are no deep learning or brain theory approaches. Um, <clears throat> and, and that's because uh, out of the more state-of-the-art uh, literature that I found for cooperative, cooperative multi-agent plan recognition, uh, no one implemented a deep learning or brain theory approaches. Um, and you may ask, okay, where did you get those definitions? And um, those, those are general definitions that are used in the plan uh, recognition literature at large. So in theory, there could be a deep learning approach for cooperative multi-agent plan recognition and a brain theory approach. Um, I just didn't see them in any recent literature. Um, as you can see, a majority of approaches, recent approaches are offline which is kind of surprising to me because I feel like online plan recognition is probably a little bit more useful because um, I, I feel like there's more information or more use for information of inferring like plan process while the plan is happening, um, but that's just me. Um, you notice that I have starred some of the entries. Um, and so those stars mean that that uh, piece of literature used uh, or modeled agent communication and natural language dialogue, um, you'll notice there's only three of them. So a lot of these papers reference that uh, Falcone and Castel Franchi paper uh, saying how important agent communication and natural language dialogue is. And yet there's not a lot of uh, cooperative multi-agent plan recognition approaches that model agent communication. 
Um, so that was really surprising to me, you know, and, and maybe it's just a really, really hard problem. And, and, you know, a lot of these people are still thinking about how to incorporate agent communication. Um, um, and one other thing I want to say is almost all of these approaches are keyhole systems. So basically in, in all these scenarios, they assume that the system has no interaction with the agents and the agents have don't cater their behavior towards being plan recognized. So it's all keyhole, except for the Lavier's and Sotinkar Sotinkar paper, um, which is a adversarial system. That's the example I gave of the two football teams. And one thing, you, uh, one last thing I want to point out is you'll notice most approaches are either plan library or domain theory. Um, so for plan recognition in general, not a lot of people use classical machine learning approaches. Um, one reason for that, um, which I'll point out in my next couple of slides, is uh, plan rec uh, classical machine learning approaches are not very expressive. They're not able to model as fine details or complex logics as these other approaches. Um, you can argue that, yeah, mach a machine learning model can't really model like logic really at all. So again, you, you won't see very many classical machine learning uh, approaches in plan recognition. As I said in my overview, um, I wanna talk about the findings and conclusions I've made from doing my literature review. So first of all, we have the cost expressiveness trade-off. Uh, these are the three main types of approaches that you'll see in cooperative multi-agent plan recognition. Um, as I said before, classical machine learning methods are not very expressive. And uh, the logic-based approaches are very expressive with the domain theory-based approaches being highly expressive. And what I, what I mean by expressiveness is the method's ability to model and represent the fine details of problem scenario. So most classical machine learning methods, uh, you know, they try to develop some kind of, you know, statistical or mathematical model that just tries to classify strategies or plan information from very low level data. Uh, and it's typically spatial temporal data. So like, for example, there was a paper on a soccer match. And so they're basically just trying to classify what like a soccer team strategy is based off the positions and movements of the players. Whereas in like a plan library based method, we're trying to model their actual, like a, 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 tree, a tree or some kind of grammar like structure of their actions of like, oh, the soccer, soccer player A passed the ball to soccer player B. Soccer player C dribbled the ball past, you know, so, uh, soccer player D. Um, so that's a little bit more expressive. And then in domain theory based approaches, we could model things like preconditions and effects. So we could say, okay, soccer player A wants to pass the ball to soccer player B, but for them to do that, the precondition is soccer player B has to be free, has to be open. Uh, so like machine learning approaches typically can't model those types of things, can't model like preconditions like that. Um, so that's what we mean by expressiveness here as, you know, the, 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 the domain theory based approaches are really good at modeling those fine details of a problem scenario, like preconditions and states and effects. Um, but uh, as I said, there is a trade-off. So machine learning methods typically have a very low computational cost. Um, they're, they're typically have very fast and, in, and inexpensive uh, costs compared to uh, these highly expressive methods. Um, so like the domain theory based approaches, like, for example, there was a paper that said that most of their, most times their algorithm timed out from the, the, the sheer computational cost of their algorithm. So, so as your method gets more expressive, the, the, the cost gets a lot higher. Um, and so like one thing, this trade-off makes developing highly expressive online approaches difficult. So, you know, you can imagine trying to do plan recognition for an offline approach where I get the full plan and then I can take my time to do plan recognition. Whereas in an online approach, I have to do these high cost computations as, plan, as, as the plan is going on. So I have to do them quickly. 
So you can imagine that trying to have a highly expressive online approach is, is a very hard thing to have. Um, and, and one thing with these logic-based methods is, uh, like I said, we have what's called logic uh, probabilistic hybrid methods. And usually what that means is we combine the method with some kind of a probabilistic inference um, uh, that helps us sample a solution or, or find the most likely solution. And typically these help the high computational cost of highly expressive methods, uh, but they can tend to decrease solution accuracy. Uh, so for example, a, a lot of times when we use a probabilistic inference method with our uh, combined with the logic-based method, uh, we, we, we usually are, 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 we're usually are finding local uh, optima instead of global optima in terms of finding solutions. And, you know, and maybe that's good enough. Maybe it's good enough to say, hey, I just want to find a high, it doesn't have to be the best solution. I just want to find a solution that's highly likely. Um, so anyways, so that's the cost expressiveness trade-off. Um, one of the other things I found when doing the literature review is there was a lack of benchmarking and consistency of evaluation methods. So like one thing I noticed is like in the cooperative multi-agent plan recognition literature, like most people didn't do any type of benchmarking. Like typically like in a machine learning paper, someone says, hey, I want to try using this method and I'm going to, in my results and evaluation, I'm going to compare it to these two other methods or I'm going to compare it to someone else's work. You don't see that a lot in this literature. And that's kind of, that's kind of startling. That's kind of an issue. Because, um, you know, comparing and contrasting with other literature demonstrates the impact your work has on your research area. Uh, so it's really surprising that this is not happening. Um, so it's like, you know, people are not typically saying, like, like, it's like people will report, oh, my method has a 90% accuracy. Okay, well, I don't know, if you don't compare it to someone else, I don't know if 90% is good. Maybe someone has a less expensive method that gets 95% accuracy. Um, so yeah, benchmarking is important. Um, and, and you know, there was almost no consistent evaluation methods used between approaches. And as I said before, like, there's many different types of plan recognition problems to solve, but even between like comparable uh, plan recognition problems, like where they're trying to solve like a similar task, uh, they're like every every piece of literature is like developing their own evaluation method, like completely new one. Um, and really, this makes it really challenging to compare performance across approaches. So, like as someone who's like reviewing this literature, I can't take two pieces of co cooperative multi-agent plan recognition literature and say, hey, this person had a better approach because their evaluation methods are not comparable. Um, so, that, you know, so th there's some challenges there. Um, and then like a big thing I noticed is uh, a, a lot of authors are not publicly releasing code and supplementar uh, supplementary materials. So, I don't, uh, you know, a lot of you might have this experience where you're trying to reproduce someone else's work. And it's very, very hard to re reproduce someone else's work from their published paper alone. Typically to effect re effectively reproduce someone's work, like usually you need like their, some of the code that they use. Maybe they have supplementary material explaining their algorithms in more detail and depth. But like in this literature, uh, you know, I, I couldn't find a single author that released their code or supplementary materials. So if I was someone trying to reproduce their work, um, you know, especially if they published in a journal that made them omit a lot of their details, you know, I, I couldn't really reproduce that work unless I try to track down that author. And again, some of you probably have that experience too, trying to track down authors and how difficult that is, you know. You know, this, per, you know, uh, you, you don't know which school email to use or, you know, and a lot of times you try emailing them, they don't even respond to you. So, so again, you know, that's a big issue. You know, we, you know, as researchers, we should be wanting people to like try to reproduce our stuff, make sure that we're sane, um, you know, and we should be trying to share as much information as possible to the people who want it. Um, so that, that's my piece on that. Um, so anyways, 
those were like my conclusions and findings for my literature review, at least the main ones. Um, so as I said before, I do want to give some personal impact and next steps. As I said before, I'm part of the Tomcat project. And so I've been developing my own approach to cooperative multi-agent plan recognition, and I hope to get publishable results soon. Um, we as a team were especially interested in uh, works that utilize agent communication in natural language. So again, it was very surprising that you can't find a whole lot of that. Um, and so maybe you know, that, that's something we really need to dive into deeply ourselves and start making that kind of like a standard for this uh, type of work, you know, cause you know, agent communication is like this huge thing. Like people talk to each other while they do tasks and complete goals. And, and what they say, you know, can, can give us insight on what their plans are. Um, so, and, you know, and, 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 and doing this literature review has inspired me to further explore, you know, these methods I reviewed um, I also learned about, you know, approaches that are not very promising. Um, like a lot of the machine learning approaches were not very promising. Uh, I can't see our team using those. Um, and then, you know, reviewing the literature in general has given me like a better sense of, uh, of the state of the field of, of, of cooperative multi-agent plan recognition. And uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Lauren. Um, are there any questions from people about terminology or about maybe how we can apply plan recognition or questions in general? Oh, I'll go ahead and start with one. Um, how does this, uh, how, how would you characterize work that's done in reinforcement learning, which is learning policies, you know, that are relating actions to, um, you know, states and when to take them and so forth? How would you relate that to this kind of work? Um, in, in most of the literature, like they, they typically see reinforcement learning as like a, uh, like, like a, 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 I don't want, like a opposing line of research. So, 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 so usually you say, okay, I can do plan recognition or I could do reinforcement learning. Um, and, well, actually, and I would say that reinforcement learning is more in line with like automated planning as like an al alternative way to, to do automated planning. Um, but I have seen some stuff of like trying to infer like be doing behavior recognition uh, uh, using reinforcement learning. Um, if I had to classify as like a, a approach type, I would say that it's somewhat more of a um, of a machine learning or 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 deep learning type approach, um, and and I am aware that there there is in, there is what's called inverse um, reinforcement learning, which is like, uh, if I recall, is you know trying trying to inf infer policy uh, given observed uh, actions. Yeah, and actually, I, just to clarify, in inverse reinforcement learning. Um, the goal, the interest, or the goal is generally to be trying to um, estimate what the reward function would be. So usually in reinforcement learning, you, you start with a reward, or at least there's rewards out there in the world, and then you're simultaneously learning the, um, the model, you know, how the world behaves while also looking at learning the actions, uh, what the action, you know, sorry, learning, learning a policy. In inverse reinforcement learning, you don't know what the, re what the reward structure is, what the rewards are, and how, in other words, what the agent's value system is. And then you're doing a way of trying to estimate that based on observing the behavior. I would say there are some relations. I think you and I should follow up and, and maybe right. talk about adding this kind of branch of things, but yeah. 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 Sure. Okay. Thank you. Hi, hi Lauren. You, uh, you presented that five like you divided things into five, one of which was adversarial. Um, uh, is it this one? Yeah, this one. Yeah. Uh, so, so does the system know what kind? Like, does what? What if the system doesn't know whether it's adversarial or it's cooperative, and then? Uh, so, so it's something you designed. So, so I have some plan recognition problem that I'm trying to solve. 
And I get to, uh, based off the problem, I can say, okay, in this problem, like I'm going to assume that agents know that their their plans are being recognized. So like, it, it maybe maybe as an application, I'm going to say, okay, like the agents need to behave in a certain way to make plan recognition easier. Where like, and the same thing is like a, like an adversarial, um, may, maybe it's like, a, I developed the system knowing that maybe I'm trying to do plan recognition on terrorists. And maybe I'm gonna assume that the terrorists are aware of this system and they're gonna try to do things to, to fool the system. Um, so, so it's re it's really something you know it's it's really something implemented in design like it's like um, it's it's based off what type of problem you're trying to solve. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well, I have a couple of questions. Um, first of all, since this slide is up, if you have a subgroup detection, does that necessarily mean that the rest of these are mutually exclusive? So, if I have a group of agents and it's suddenly subgroup, could I have part of them being intended and in another part being adversarial? Um, yeah, actually, that's a good question. I, I think, I feel like that's something that could happen. Um, now, now you, you would have to think about like the context, like what type of problem would, would that be? Like, and, and, and you know, and, and, I, and maybe I can think of like the football problem scenario again, where I have two opposing teams but maybe the plan recognizer is not on one of the teams. You know, maybe I am like, maybe I'm some AI agent that acts as the coach. So maybe uh, I want to do plan recognition on the team that I'm aligned with. And that team is trying to work, you know, towards helping me do plan recognition better. But I'm also trying to recognize the plans of the opposite team and they're trying to fool me. So, uh, so yeah, I'd say that that's a possible thing. Um, uh, and something I forgot to mention is um, typically when we when we when we think of these classifications overlapping, um, we usually think of intended and intervention uh, overlapping. So we could have a system where both the agents try to help out the plan recognizer, and the plan recognizer itself interacts with the environment and agents. Um, and, and at the highest level of like of a uh, of, of, uh, plan recognizer and agent interaction, we actually call that a direct communication system. So basically the agents and the, the system itself are actively talking and discussing with each other. Thank you. Well, are there any other questions? Okay. Thank you everyone for joining us today. And um, again, if you have questions, contact Lauren and he'd be happy to talk to you. Okay. Well, uh, thank you everybody. Thanks for listening.